Right, Mother's Day over here in the UK, so I've uh, snuck out the kitchen, um, left the kids to it. I'm sure there's uh, potato peels and carrot peels flying everywhere. So I'm in the garage for a half an hour, hopefully. Thought I'd shoot a quick video uh, with an update on what I've been up to. Firstly, really big thank you to all those who commented last week in um, the um, RC, um, RC groups forums. Um, really pre appreciate the help um, and advice. Um, this week, I um, made a decision to, after um, Nitro's uh, comments, um, reference the blade, the stock blade being uh, unbalanced. Um, obviously, I'm not able to do a retest on that because I burnt out the E Flight 10mm uh, in runner. Um, Needless doesn't really matter um, as I've decided to go um, up a couple of mil to 30 mil um, on the rotor and um, using um, 12 mil in runners. Um, I think that's where I need to be um, with the setup. So one of the things that Nitro actually um, recommended perhaps was testing the, I don't know how you pronounce it, efflux. Um, or well the speed of the air coming out of the exhaust. <laughs> it's Corey. The speed of the air coming out of the exhaust, and um, so, which is, makes a lot of sense. Um, and also another thing he explained was um, the thrust, the importance of thrust and e flux, and how that sort of works with with jets or planes. Um, it's my understanding now that um, if you have a heavy plane or a heavy jet. Uh, then perhaps thrust is more important um, than efflux. But if you go a light setup and you want to fly fast, then you need um, plenty of airspeed efflux, which is the speed of the air coming out the uh, exhaust nozzle. Um, so um, slowly starting to sink in. I, I won't claim to understand it all still, um, but yeah, it's it's getting there. Um, and so I've changed. So I'm going up to 30 mil. Um, 30 mil fans um, or rotors. Um, let me just zoom in on those for here. Right, they look. Uh, that looks in focus. So, um, got a. Three, a six, and a um, nine blade, a rotor, uh, 30 mil size. So these are completely my own design now. Um, excuse me. Um, and I've actually sized them a mil too big, so they're about 31 mil. Um, and what I'll be doing is, um, when I finish balancing these all part of the finishing process, I'll actually um, size these down. Um, to fit the inlet um, better. Um, the main reason for that is basically um, I found that my tips weren't printing as nicely as they could be. So if I'm printing a little, I just print these a little bit, a little bit bigger, and then I can uh, spin them up in the Dremel and just sand them down, um, and hopefully end up with really nice clean tips. Um, I've also the, the, the three the three blade um, rotor you can see it was actually printed at uh, 50 microns, so that's 0 0.05 millimeters. And although the surface and the detail uh, is brilliant, I'm finding that they aren't as strong. And the, the only way I can probably explain that is imagine um, this form of 3D printing that I'm doing is like um, you end up with a with a part that has a grain in it, very much like wood, and um, as we all know, to split wood, you split it along the grain. So the more grains we have in there, the, the more chance of uh, weakness uh, being in the in the actual rotor. So, and also I was printing at um, 240 degrees Celsius, which my original thinking was get it really, really hot so it melts, so it fuses. Um, but I think in doing so, I'm actually changing the uh, mechanical properties of the ABS, the finished ABS part. Um, so yeah, so I'm not 
I don't think I'll be printing more, many more at uh, 50 microns um, at 240 degrees Celsius. With the other two, I printed at uh, 100 microns, so that's 0.1 millimeters. Um, but I left the temperature the same at 240. Uh, I try not to change too many variables when I'm changing settings. Um, and they came out a lot better. Uh, but I think I'll actually go down, back down to um, 30, uh, 230 degrees Celsius um, on the next batch I print and see how those, those turn out. Um, uh, they no means bad, very usable. Um, but yeah, some stuff I learned this week with those. To test the system, I've set up this little test rig. Um, not to worry about weight, because I just wanted something really solid um, that I could use and wasn't going to fall apart after a couple of uses. So um, I've done it in three sections. So we've got, I'll start at the back. So we've got the exhaust, um, exhaust nozzle. Um, and again, I can change and print these exhaust nozzles to, to suit um, different setups. At the moment, this exhaust no nozzle just goes down to 85% um, 85% um, fan swept area. Um, that looks a little bit small to me, so I need to check my dimensions. Um, but I'm sure I checked them at the time because I thought that looked a bit small. Um, but I'm going to recheck them um, before I do my tests. Um, so we've got the exhaust nozzle, and obviously I can just change print out different size um, exhaust nozzles to test the system um, as I go along and then we've got the what I'm calling the shroud um, which is the mounting for the uh, motor and the vanes oh, I don't know how you pronounce the other word it's the stylators um, now I've used four stylators I think it's based on the a AOE shroud um, and I think um, nitro um, nitro shrouds on um, shapeways. Um, I saw Oliver's um, shrouds on, on shapeways, and he uses four um, for to get high efficiency with a three blade <coughs> rotor. Um, so that's mainly the main reason why I chose to go along that route. Um, the vanes, I'm just call them vanes. Um, the vanes are actually sort of sanded aerofoil shapes. So There's a full aerofoil shape on there um, and the trading edges on those are very very sharp um, because it just seemed like the right thing to do with those <laughs> um, so I've done that um, you know I'm learning as I go along so um, just bear with me um, and the other th decision I made with this this part of the, the um, system was to have it so the um, the rotor is completely accessible once the um, ring, the inlet ring is taken off. So, uh, whereas normally on a traditional shroud, um, this area comes up over the rotor because it's all one piece, obviously. But um, just allows me to get to um, remove the rotor really easy. Um, and then the inlet ring, I just looked at what was out there and um, designed based on um, what I'd read on inlet rings. Um, so Claude did a, a big write up um, on one of the forum. Um, one of the threads on inlet rings and stuff. So I just um, Wessex, Wessex models. I think did a, 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 a really up on all this. So I just read through their literature and just based the, the ring on that. Now this actually quite it doesn't look like much, but I got pretty excited over this little piece of plastic uh, to the wife's amusement, <laughs> as we do. Um, I printed this at. Um, 330 degrees Celsius, which is the right, the correct temperature for 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 printing ABS, the recommended temperature uh, for ABS. So I, I printed these at um, uh, 240 degrees Celsius, and this at 230 degrees Celsius. Um, mainly because I found on this piece here, I was getting incursion, um, like porosity, I suppose you could call it, from the support material. Um, so that's one of the problems I had. So obviously when I dissolved out the support material, which was things like this, uh, it was printed in that in that configure in that orientation with the bolt plate down here. Um, so there'd be support built up underneath the and there'd be support built up so the printer could print on top of that support. Um, and then you develop, you just dissolve away that support and you're left with the, a nice clean piece. Um, but that support is a different material to the ABS. It's a material called hips and it um, dissolves in like a 
orange turpentine cleaner fluid. Um, and basically, um, I had a few cracks. Um, now, I don't know whether the cracks are due to um, the sort of incursions from the um, hips. Obviously, obviously, the hips being dragged across onto that piece from the other nozzle and then printed into the part, then when I dissolve it out, I'm going to have a, 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 a weak point, a porosity, with porosity, I suppose you could call it in a, from a welding um, terms or casting terms. Um, and the other thing was because of the increase in temperature, whether um, that was causing problems in the uh, final um, mechanical properties of the, the plastic. So I found that and then I printed this one. Uh, I actually printed one at the same temperature as that and it cracked when I tightened tightened it all up. Um, so I printed one at 230 degrees Celsius, still at uh, 100 microns layer height. And it came out really, really nice, uh, really uniform, uh, really, really nice print. And then with this one here, I um, tried a new system uh, for finishing it. I obviously wanted it as smooth as I could on the, on the inlet. Um, and I, first off, I've sanded through the grades, uh, starting at 250 and then going down to wet and dry at um, probably 1,000 grit. Um, and then after that, I cut it with a cutting paste. I use a cutting, a sort of polishing cutting paste, um, specifically for plastics. And then I polished it, um, again with a polish specific for plastics, and it's, it's come out absolutely amazing. Um, you know, it's so smooth, um, really tactile. <laughs> But yeah, you can, yeah, I got really very excited about this yesterday when I when I finished it. Um, so I had Escrow and Men getting excited over pieces of plastic, but there you have it. Um, so basically, um, that all fits together. Um, another thing I did was um, just for the, the cable management. Um, I thought I'd try a new new way of um, doing the cable man management in the in the in the rear of the duct. So the the motor goes in there with the cables pointing to the bottom, and then you just pinch these together so they're all in line, um, like that. Yeah, and then when you fit the straw out, they um, either the the rear ducting piece or the um, the nozzle in this case um, that's got a little slot in it as well, and that just ties everything together and keeps it from moving around. So you end up with a nice streamline. Um, sort of cables at the back. Um, I did actually print a um, a cover, uh, like a, shroud, a cover for the uh, for the wires, but I think that's perhaps a little bit excessive at the moment. Um, I'm not really sure how much that would benefit the the system, uh, apart from just adding weight um, to the project. So um, so that's nice and tidy. I'm so I'm happy with that. So I'll probably use that that sort of configuration in the Hunter. Um, um, and then obviously I could put the rotor on there, I could really, really good access to the rotors <coughs> and um, the inlet ring on there, so it's uh, all hunky-dory. Um, and then that then obviously goes into the test rig. Um, another thing that um, Nitro uh, picked up on was, well the, the, the other point he picked up was on the um, the speed of the air coming out and it would be good to actually measure that and get some measurements on that. So um, the system I'm using is the Eagle Tree system Oops. and they do a um, air speed center, sensor um, and that uh, works on exactly the same principle, principles apparently as a, a full size aircraft. So it's a um, pilot tube um, and that will hook up to the computer and get logged. Um, with the RPM, uh, amps, volts, etc. So that'll be really good. So we could, uh, you know, I could test that, uh, I don't know, say 25%, then 50%, then 75%, and 100%, and we'll be able, should be able to compare, um, have a good indication of um, what happens at those different settings. Um, so we're adding up with, so from a test perspective, um, let me just show you the sensor. And, uh, so if I put that back together, I'll just put this on the rig, and then you can see how how it all sets up. Right. Um, so back. Um, just put it all to <coughs> together. <coughs> so that's the the sort of test unit um, as we discussed earlier. Um, so basically, it just pops into the rig. Like that, hopefully. And then um, this is the the Eagle Tree uh, probe. 
um, that I've got, and I'll just slide that down, and then obviously I can swing it around and get the best um, position for for that, and that will um, that will record against the um, volts, amps, what we've got RPM, temperatures, etc. So I hope hoping that will actually help out quite a lot, um, or help me understand how things work. Okay, so for, with, for each motor, uh, so I've got motor A in the, in the, in the rig, um, I'll fit the three blade on first, then I'll test it on um, two cells, three cells and four cells, and I'll take the three blade off, put the six blade on, test it with that same motor on uh, two, three and four cells, and do the same with the um, nine blade. Swap the motor out, and then do exactly the same tests. Um, so that's that's where I'm going from a sort of testing uh, point of view. And hopefully, at the end of it, I have some decent data. Um, what else is there to tell you about? I think that's about it, really. Um, I may do another video on some of the um, tests I did with um, the composite materials um, if I get a chance but I might need to wait till next week. Okay, anyway, um, thanks for tuning in, and thanks again very much for those who have commented on RC groups. Okay, cheers buds, thanks.